It's an absolutely brutal day in the world of Magic the Gathering. The Barcelona VIP disaster is mind-blowing, so much so that it actually crushed the soul of a small child. On top of that, we have whales exiting the game in record numbers. Things are very bad for Magic right now. Magic. I am a wizard! History. The Magic Historian. My bones hurt. Greetings! Owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. My friends, I hope the day finds you well because we have gathered for a very grim installment of mega magic news. Things are not going well in the world of Magic the Gathering. We have the Barcelona VIP disaster, which literally leads to a small child having their hopes dashed on top of everything else, on top of upsetting all their customers, and you have a massive exodus of whales. The signs are there. They're actually speaking up now. We're gonna talk about some posts that they put up talking about their discontent and the first counterspell of that insane secret layer variety that we saw before has shown up and there's a couple of tweaks from the previous one we saw so we'll talk about that as well. But I want to dive in talking about this Barcelona situation because it is absolutely wild and at the same time par for the course. Wizards of the Coast came out and said, yo, we're gonna make the VIP experience better. But it looks like it was all words because somebody has gone ahead and itemized a whole number of issues they had while at this event and we're going to go through it all. Now, let's start off by talking about the price tag for a VIP pack, friends. It's $850. We're talking about American dollars and this is roughly because the post is actually using euros and it says it costs 780 euros and when you exchange between euros and the American dollar it's about a 10% increase. So the numbers I'm going to use are rough but they're close enough for our discussion. 850 American dollars is what it takes to get one of these VIP passes. So this is supposed to be the creme de la creme experience, right? Straight out the gates, starting out with the breakfast. It actually sounds like they downgraded from previous instances. So the person said that the breakfast was cheap and awful. You could literally find better food outside the venue. You could get a $3 breakfast outside of the venue that would make, <laughs> that would satisfy you better than this garbage that they're providing for the VIP experience. And the person who was listing all this, just so you know, is somebody who's had a VIP experience at a whole number of different locations. So they have a rough idea of how other companies handle it. And they were shocked with this nonsense. So when it comes to the drinks that are available, water, coffee and tea. Last time we talked about how they had cans of pop and stuff like that. Apparently they scaled back. <laughs> Maybe Wizards was like, how do we cut the margins on this even better? So on top of that, what do they do? They announce an artist who's going to come into the VIP area. Now, you may remember in past instances, some artists have had to go out of their way to be like, okay, nothing's going on for the VIPs. I guess I'll go in there and do something. So Wizards is like, no, okay, you know what? Let's make sure an artist is in there. All they did was make sure to announce an artist would be there. And then the artist never actually showed up. Now the next item on the list is mind blowing to me. This one's crazy. So they were gonna have a raffle for a complete unverse collection. So to me, this is like a big ticket item, right? The value of it is worth over $800. So this is a big raffle they're gonna have for the VIPs. Now what if they just didn't do the raffle. What if the raffle was canceled and they didn't say anything about it and then when you brought it up they went, here's a booster pack because <laughs> that's what happened. They, they, can, they canceled the raffle for this, <laughs> for this $800 whatever Unverse collection and, and you had to specifically bring it up. You had to actually ask because it wasn't announced and when you did, you get an extra booster pack. The, that's it. That's it. 
So there was also some confusion where they had some Saturday events that weren't meant for VIP holders, but some VIP holders were given access to it and some weren't. So there's inconsistency in terms of what the VIP holders are being given from one badge to another, but there's no difference between the $850 for the VIP experience. Hold on, sorry, that was just the first page. I have another full page of things to discuss about just the VIP badge. Okay, so the, what do we have next? Oh, the Zendikar VIP event. The event that crushed a poor little boy's soul. It was nightmarish. So here's your VIP event. Guess what we're gonna do? All y'all VIPs, here's your packs. We're all gonna have a good time, <laughs> right? Whatever it is. Actually, I'm not even sure if it was they gave you packs for this. This might've been some other kind of tourney, but what happens is people drop from the event immediately and then also after round one. So that says to me, it's most likely a draft event. People participate in it to get their stuff and then they bounce out. But here's the thing, the people in charge of the event just weren't running it really. So they didn't actually remove anybody who dropped from the event. So what happens is you have all kinds of people paired up. Now, I've run a whole number of tournaments. I know how much it can just make things crazy when you're missing one or two people, let alone three, four, five. It messes up the pairings, it messes up the match results, all of it. So what you're supposed to do is at the end of each round, make sure you've got everybody who's dropped and remove them from the tournament. Or at the very least, at the start of the next round, make sure, yo, is everybody here? Is anybody dropped? So before you announce the next pairings, you have everybody there. So they didn't do this at all, right? So you have a ton of people sitting around for multiple hours, just waiting for opponents for games they didn't get to play. And that's where this poor little boy comes in. Some poor little lad, his parents paid $850 for him to have this very important person. I, I, I assume that's what it's supposed to stand for in more, most places. I have no idea what it stands for for wizards, right? Obviously some instance of procure their money, I don't know, I don't know. Very investable person that you can use them as an investment to take money from? It's clunky, obviously I don't have a good zinger for that one, but regardless, you have this poor kid who literally just wants to play magic, who's getting more and more frustrated. I can't even imagine what that would be like. Your parents go out of their way to buy you this expensive ticket, you head on in there, you're getting, oh, I get to play magic and this is what it's all about. And then they just don't even bother to manage the event. 850 American dollars is more than $1,000 here in Canada. $1,000 to be disrespected. And the disrespect just continues. They had a special Sunday draft. Now, do you think that they would send that out via the, oh, that makes me remember, actually, I forgot. I forgot at the very beginning when Buddy actually signed up originally and paid, you get a broken email that doesn't work. So they can't even email the people who've signed up properly, right? And that plays into this level too, the whole email and communication. So there's a special Sunday draft that's announced for the VIPs. Now you figure, probably be announced way in advance or maybe they'd put up a sign or, you know, maybe email everybody who paid 850 US dollars to be a part of it. But no, but no, be there at 9 a.m. in the morning for the announcement or you just miss out altogether. Weren't there for the 9 a.m. breakfast? Well, you get nothing. No way to compensate them afterwards. Like, I, I don't know what is going on with this company. It's absolutely insane. Imagine this as well. The special VIP events, they tell you this. The special VIP events happen at lunch. That's all the information you're given. And then you find out there's two lunch periods. One goes from one to three, and the other goes for three to five. They're two hours long, and there's two of them. The communication on this VIP stuff is nutty. There was literally no information given to clear up these two different lunch periods. Like, what? what is the deal? Is Wizards of the Coast literally are they struggling so hard that instead of priming the VIPs to actually make a repeatable experience you'd want to go back to, they're just like, milk as much money as we can from these people? Like, the first time they did a VIP, they literally included Magic 30 boosters, and this was when Magic 30 wasn't completely reviled, and they thought it was actually going to succeed. They went, included all of that for the VIPs. If you add up what the VIPs are getting here, I feel like 
you'd be lucky to get $100 worth of stuff. Them canceling the $800, the $800 raffle and just giving them a booster pack, it smacks of just not caring. Now, I will add that when this person listed all their complaints, they did say the people actually working at the convention were apologizing for the way things were going. They seemed like they cared, but they weren't being given enough support. So this boils down to both Wizards of the Coast, and as far as I understand it, it's Reed Pop that's responsible for organizing these and the previous ones. So this is two different companies that aren't communicating. Clearly Wizards of the Coast doesn't care enough to tell them to clean their act up and fix this, which is wild because these are your whales and whales are leaving in record numbers. You already see tons of people leaving the game because game stores are going, yo, we're shutting down our buy list to a large degree. We're no longer giving out cash. We only take trade-ins. Like this is a widespread thing, but I'm noticing more and more posts in the financial circles from Wales, basically writing dissertations on why they are leaving Magic or greatly pulling back their spend to an infinitesimally small portion where they're going from spending 60 grand to like 500 bucks on Magic in a year. That is a huge impact. And these whales are the customers that Wizards is actively courting right now. So that's actually going to be the focus of tonight's live stream over on my Hatcher channel. I wanna go in point by point some of these issues that the whales are talking about because it's interesting to see it from the perspective of what is currently Wizards target customer and understand that after a certain point, Wizards is gonna to have to pull back on this. They're not going to be able to whale hunt the same way and they are going to have to find a way to return to the baseline that kept magic working for the first 25 years. Essentially what they've done at this point is they've grabbed future profits with all their gimmicks and insanity and now that's not going to be there waiting in the future you can't do much more in terms of serialized the lord of the rings was probably the high watermark where do we go with insanity from here how do you create that level of like sales and burst uh, commander masters is failing miserably that is not a very enjoyable product to open because it is insanely overpriced so you end up with a feel bad scenario in every booster pack pretty much unless you get a mega ultra insano hit you're just going what even was the point so that's a product that's for these big whales as well they are just going you know what there's there's nothing left for me here wizards is grabbing everything up that they can and speaking of grabbing everything up the newest counterspell. Remember how we talked about this counterspell situation and how it's really Wizards' underhanded way to bring another run at the reserve list? Well, one of the counterspells has actually been found in a secret lair in Barcelona. Now, it is somewhat different than the counterspell that we saw previously, but only in some minor way. So I'm gonna put it up on the screen. We'll talk really quickly about the differences on the card, and then we'll talk about what's going on here overall in case you haven't actually heard what Wizard's secret plan with this is. So taking a look at this counterspell, the big differences on this one are the fact that the little foil stamp that's being shown there on the card is a different shape. So they just have some foil stuff slapped on each card right that trying to authenticate it and also make it feel more special and play testy. But this is a very weird situation because play test cards in Magic don't actually look like this. And when Wizards announced this card was gonna be coming, they just went, hey, it's a really cool card. Isn't it really cool? Super cool card, super cool. By the way, not tournament legal, but super cool, super cool. Anyways, keep your eyes open. That's all we're gonna say for now. So people are going, yo, what does this mean? I'll tell you what it means. This is connected to Magic 30. This is Wizards going, yo, we're printing cards that aren't tournament legal. Just so happens to have the alpha artwork, but Counterspell's been printed a ton of different times. So it won't set off the alarm bells for people who are actually paying attention to what's going on with the reserve list as if they had reprinted a reserve list card, but they're gonna be able to point at them when they do actually bring out the reserve list versions of these and go, well, look guys, we already said whatever and we're already doing it. You didn't have a problem with the Counterspell. You can't have a problem with this one. That's the vibe. They're basically just trying to go, we're just going to tiptoe in behind you and nibble on your ear a little. And then the tongue goes in and then they're grabbing your head, right? So <laughs> that's what's going on with this. A hundred percent. I feel absolutely comfortable saying this is a secret run at the reserve list. And after Wizards has gotten us accustomed to this first little wave of these playtest cards that will all, incidentally, by the way, be cards that come 
from Alpha. Expect to see maybe something like Dark Ritual, right? It'll get you excited, but it also won't go ding, ding, ding. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. You're not supposed to reprint that. That's on the reserve list. But then once we're accustomed, once we've had their breath on the back of our neck for a while, that's when they bite and the reserve list comes roaring back. Elbow drop like we're going to grab that cash from the reserve list. So that's what's going on right now with Magic the Gathering. Like I said, we're going to do a live stream over on my other channel talking about the massive whale exodus, but looking at it through their eyes, through their own words, all right? So, big shout out to all of my patrons. Thank you very much for supporting my channel. It means a lot to me. I will see all of you, my friends, in the next video or over in the live stream on my other YouTube hatcher. See you there.